Okay, so this is integrated to 2.3.1, conditions for triangle similarity. All right, so um, we have a bit more of a limitation here with similarity as opposed to congruence. So with similarity, we could use angle-angle similarity. It's actually kind of nice. You don't have to find all three of them, but you could. It's just not necessary because triangle sum, the third one's going to match no matter what. So this is two pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. That's important to remember. You need them to match. Then with uh, side angle side, and yes, it must be that order, we have two, spare, two pairs of corresponding side lengths have the same ratio. Okay, so we have side lengths with the same ratio. But it's important to note that the included angles are congruent. So angles are congruent. Okay, and then the next one out of the three that we have, as opposed to five options here, we only have three, uh, side, 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 is that three pairs of corresponding side lengths have the same ratio. Again, these are the side lengths that have the same ratio. So then that means that we can say that these triangles are similar to each other. All right, so we're going to determine whether the triangles are similar. State the property if possible, the ratio of similarity. Okay, we don't have to do a full-blown proof. We're just trying to figure out right now if they are actually similar. So we're going to find the measurements that actually look like they belong together. So if we take a look at the very first triangle, remember, small with small, medium with medium, large with large. So in this case, it looks like the smallest side length within the first triangle is going to be 8.4. I'm going to match that up with the smallest triangle in, excuse me, smallest length in the other triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and write my ratio here of 8.4 over 4.2. And that looks like a ratio of 2 to 1. Okay, now let's match up the other sides. We have to have a consistent ratio. So the next side length would be 12.2 compared to 6.1. All right, so 12.2 over. 6.1, which is also going to give us 2 over 1. Okay, good. So the ratios are going to match up. This is perfect. So those two, good. All right, now we need to work on the angle. So if we take a look at the angle 103 and 103, all right, so then I can say that angle U is congruent to angle A. So that's good. All right, so in order for this to actually work, it's got to be one of the three. It's definitely not angle angle because we only know one of the angles. It's definitely not side, 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 because we don't know all three of the sides, but it is side, angle, side. So I believe that my answer to this one would be yes, and it would be side, angle, side, triangle, similarity. All right, um, let's take a look at the next one. So it looks like we've got angle measures this time. So we've got that angle A with a single tick mark is going to match up with angle D. Okay, so angle A is congruent to angle D. All right, and then moving on, looks like based off of the markers, angle B is going to be congruent to angle E. Angle B is congruent to angle E. Notice that I'm writing stuff down, but I'm not doing a formal proof out of this. We'll definitely get there. So then if you take a look at this, it looks like I have angle, angle. Oh, that's plenty. Okay, so I would say yes. So this is yes. And my reason is angle, angle, triangle, similarity. Um, okay, let's take a look at the last one. Um, this one looks a little different, but, but that's okay. We're going to match up the sides that look like they belong together. So it looks like A is going to go with KA. So let's write up our ratios. So I'm going to go KA over A, and then I will do B with KB, so KB over B, and then KC with C. Okay, if these are similar, then we need to make sure that all these ratios match. Well, I can go ahead and simplify those. So that looks like K over 1. Oh, okay, this one's K over 1, and so is the last one. So I would say yes, I think that these are similar. So yes, and my reason would be, notice I don't have any angles, but I do have all the sides. So this is side, 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 similar triangle. Okay, 
All right. Now, um, we're going to continue on with stuff that we kind of did in the previous one. You're going to have to be able to match up the side links that look like they belong together. So we're going to solve for X and Y. So we're basically being told that these triangles are similar to each other. However, we don't even need to be told that. If you take a look, I see this large triangle. So we'll go ahead and outline this guy. So I've got this large triangle. And then inside, we have a smaller triangle. But you'll notice that we have a reflexive angle up in the top corner. So that angle belongs to both of them. And I can already see that I've identified these angles that I just highlighted in green to be congruent to each other. So what I have here is I have angle, angle, triangle similarity. Okay, so these are similar. I just need to figure out who matches up with who. So again, make your decision. You need to either go big to small or small to big. And I think I'm gonna go small to big doesn't matter which way you go, just be consistent with it. So I'm basically going to go from the red triangle to the blue triangle. Small side length on the left-hand side is going to be X. Large side length that matches up with that is going to be that whole length. It's not 8. It's not X. It's the combination of both of them put together. It's going to be X plus 8. And I just like writing all of them down then and then figuring out what my equations are going to be. Okay, so now I've got the right-hand side. So here I've got 22 compared to, go all the way down, 22 plus 5, which is going to be 27. And then the one in the middle. So small is going to be 12. And large is going to be y. Now typically only one of these fractions is a ratio void of variables. That's the one you wanna use. So if I take a look at this, I've got 22 over 7. It's kind of the only fraction that I can use to solve for the x and for the y separate from each other. So I'm just going to set up two equations. So I'll do x over x plus 8 is equal to 22 over 27, and I'm going to solve that. And then I will do, actually, let's go ahead and solve that one now. So let me move this down so we've got some room. So x over x plus 8 is equal to 22 over 27. So go ahead and cross multiply and solve. So I was able to solve for x, just cross multiplied, moved things from one side to the other, and then solved for x. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Uh, use the 22 over 7 again. Don't mess with the x and the x plus 8. We know it's going to be ugly because of the answer. So let's do 22 over 27 is equal to 12 over y. Now well, do the same thing and solve for y. So I was able to get my other answer for y, again, by cross-multiplying and solving to get 162 over 11. And get the same idea on the next example. So I know that these are going to be similar because of angle, angle. And I know that because those green angles are going to be vertical. So this is angle, angle. And we can drop the triangle so we can do angle, angle similarity. All right, so let's see who matches up together. This one, I think, is a little bit easier to color code. Okay, so I'm going to use, well, I'm going to use the angle markers to help myself out. I think that Y is going to match with X, excuse me, with 12. I'm not going to do a solid 
line because in my mind those two would then be the same length which they are not but I do want to color code so that I know which ones go together so I think that Y is gonna go with 12 All right, let's keep going uh, based off of the angle measures I think 4 is gonna go with 9 And then the last one, kind of by default actually, five is gonna go with X. And then go through the same process here. You wanna find the ratio that is complete. And by that, I mean it's void of any type of variable in it. That's the one you're gonna to wanna to use a couple of times. And in this case, it's four over nine. See if you can solve for X and Y. Okay, so setting up my two proportions. So uh, Y over 12 is equal to four over nine, cross multiplying and solving, I was able to get Y. And then I used four over nine again to uh, figure out what X was. Okay, let's move on to some proofs. So um, this problem is from the notes itself within the framework. So let's take a look at this question. So an important thing to note, when we're talking about similarity this time, which we know we are because we can see that it has a similarity symbol between the two triangles, is that we really only have those three choices. So we've got angle, angle similarity, we've got side, side, side similarity, and side, angle, side similarity. So we don't have as many tools to work with, basically, at least not on this one. Um, but I do know with the first little bit of information that I'm given, this whole idea of parallel. So that parallel is gonna tell me about some angles but on its own, it won't be able to do everything for me. So I gotta get it in the proof so then I can make comments about angles. So I'm gonna put that parallel business right inside that first bubble. So let's do HM is parallel to WD. And I know this because it was given to me. Okay, so looking at that H M, let's put those markers on there. So H M W D. All right, so we could do a couple of different things. We do have the possibility of corresponding angles. And we have, a, again, a couple choices for this. So we could say that green angle matching up with that green angle. So that's a possibility. Or we could say, so like H and W, of course, you know, we would have to use more particular names here, or we could talk about M and D. Both would give us corresponding. But if you take a look at the way that this proof is set up, I only have one bubble leading from this. So I think I'm just going to choose one of them and then use the corresponding business that goes with it. And I think I'm just going to use the first one that I said. So the W and the H. All right, so uh, if I wanted to do the W, I would say angle SWD. So let's do angle SWD. And they are congruent. They are corresponding angles. And let's do SHM. Oh, running out of space. SHM. My reason, these are corresponding. Okay, now if you take a look, the rest of this isn't set up to come down from that. Now, you could. That could totally work. You could draw another arrow from the orange bubble over to the other bubble if you would like. It's a valid proof. Um, but this one doesn't have anything feeding into it. So I'm thinking that this is either vertical or reflexive based off of what we have done previously. And in this case, I think it's going to be reflexive because if we take a look at these two triangles, so we have the large triangle in blue, but then we also have the small triangle in purple. 
you'll notice that both of these triangles share that angle S up at the top. So this angle belongs in both of the triangles. And I think that that is going to be reflexive. So let's put that in the other bubble down off to the side. It looks like this is shaping up to be angle angle similarity. Okay, so let's do angle HSM. Angle HSM. It's going to be congruent to angle WSD. And my reason is that this is reflexive. Okay, now I go over to, and I filled all the bubbles in except for the very bottom, which I'm pretty sure has to do with the triangles. And I look at my reasons, and it does look like this is going to be angle-angle similarity. Okay, so at the bottom of this, outside this triangle, I'm going to go ahead and put angle-angle similarity. All right, let's name these guys. So HSM, so triangle, HSM. Again, similar to, so watch your symbols here. HSM is going to go with WSD. Okay, so there's our first triangle proof. All right, this one's a bit more complicated. Try not to get too overwhelmed here. Uh, this is also directly from the notes. We have a whole bunch of stuff that's given to us in the picture. But remember what we have to do. We've got our three choices. So we've got angle-angle similarity, we've got side-side-side similarity, and we've got side-angle-side similarity. Uh, if you take a look at the pictures, I wasn't given anything parallel, so I don't think I can come up with two angles. I'd probably come up with one because of vertical. Um, but I think I'm going to have to figure out how to match up those sides. So we have to take a lot of the information that's already handed to us and actually put it in our proof as given. Now, my recommendation to you is just make sure that you organize it so things that you want to create a ratio out of are actually next to each other and feeding into the same bubble. So here's what I mean by that. So taking a look at my picture, I'm still going to do what I've done before. So I'm going to match up the small with the small and the medium with the medium, or the small with the small and the large with the large. So in this case, in the triangle on the left-hand side, the largest length that I see is 20. If it has a partner on the other side, if these really truly are similar, which it says prove it, so I'm thinking yes, the larger side is going to be 12. Okay, so I think that those guys need to go together. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to color code my bubbles a little bit here. And I think that those are going to be the bubbles that are associated with those two larger measurements that I see between the two triangles. Okay, but I got to get it in the proof. So I actually have to introduce it like it was given to me in the picture. So I know that LF is going to be equal to 20. I know this. I know this because it was given to me. So that's going to be given. I also know that NF is going to be 12. And I know that because that was given to me. Okay, so I introduced them from the picture. Now I'm going to take those two, and I want to get rid of that little line segment here. I want to put them together. So I think I'm going to go in the picture from left triangle to right triangle. So I'm going to go 20 on top of 12. So I'm going to say that LF over NF is going to be equal to 20 over 12. And then I'm going to simplify. I'm trying to prove that the ratios are going to be the same. So if I take both of these and I divide by Four, that's going to give me five thirds. And then what I did here, the reason that justifies what I just did was I just did division. So you can do this a couple of different ways. Far more straightforward is what mathematical operation you used. But in general, this is called computation. I'm good either way. You can call it division or computation. 
Okay, let's see if we can get five thirds to happen with the other sides. All right, let's see. Go back to the picture. So I'm going to match up the 12 and the, excuse me, the 15 and the 9. So I'm going to color code these bubbles. I'll put the 15 in one and the 9 in the other. Okay. So the 15 was EF. So let's say that EF, not the bar, is equal to 15. And then I'm going to say that IF is equal to 9. And I know this, both of them, because it was in the picture. It was given to me. All right, now I went left triangle to right triangle. So let's stick with that, EF and IF. So 15 over 9, if I divide both of those by 3, I get 5 thirds. Oh, good. Same one. Uh, so then you can call this division, or you can call it computation. Either's fine. And then let's color code this guy. Okay, now, now I know that the ratio for the yellow sides is 5 thirds. The ratio for the orange sides is 5 thirds. This is good. Let's pull it all together now. So this is going to bring together both of them. Okay, so I'm going to take what I figured out on the left-hand side, which was LF and NF, and I'm going to make the relationship that I got the same thing with EF and IF, and that for both of them, I got 5 thirds. This is called equal ratios, and that's because the fractions are actually the same. So equal ratios. Okay, so now... I have proven the sides part of it. So basically have two sides here. You can see it inside the pink circle because I have the sides comparison of LF and NF and the side comparison of EF and IF. But I still need one more thing. So um, I've got side, side. I need to either find another side, the other one that's missing, or I need to find an angle. I don't have enough information to find the other side, but I do have enough information to find angles that match. So I think what I'm going to do here is identify all of the stuff that's happening at angle F as vertical. So just be careful here. Remember there's multiple angle Fs. So inside the green circle, I'm gonna talk about the angles. So I'm gonna have angle. Let's do the one on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go uh, yellow, green, orange, so LFE. So LFE is congruent to, all right, I think it's going to be NFI. My reason is that they're vertical. Okay, I now have everything that I need. So in this very last bubble, I can now say that the triangles are similar. So L. E, F is, oh, not congruent, is similar to N, I, F. And based off of what I found, I found uh, two sides that had the exact same ratio and the angle between them. So I believe that this is side angle side similarity.